A pleasant day to each and everyone, especially to our future civil engineers, to our ever supportive college instructor, Engineer Raquel A. Almendares. Today, I will be presenting to you our fourth and final report in engineering management entitled Tendering Procedure. But before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Prince Arvikan Victorio, and I will be opening up this report with the overview of the tendering procedure. So for the overview, let's define the terms. Tender. Nope, hindi ito yung tender juicy hot dog na usually inaalmusal natin, guys. Mali yun. Tender is somewhat like a bid, no? So tender, according to our definition here, refers to a sealed bid or offer document. It is a document na pinapasa or sinasubmit ni contractor in response to a request for tenders. So what is a request for tenders? Request of tenders after kasi ng planning and design stage, yung mga consulting engineers and employer is naghahanap sila ng mga contractor na magsasakatuparan ng kanilang mga design. Kaya yun. So these tenders or tender documents contains detailed information on requirements, yung mga quotations, and kanilang mga specified costs, yung mga estimates, and the terms associated with the potential contract or mga terms na sinet ni contractor para makapag-work sila together with the consulting engineers. Okay? So next. Tenderer or bidder refers naman dun sa mga contractor. So sabi dito, refers to a person or company. It's either an individual, yung contractor, or a company that puts forward or submits. Itong andito, yan ay tiyatawag na tender, katulad sa definition kanina. A sealed bid containing an estimate of cost and other requirements. So tender or bidder is a person or a company that submits a tender. Okay, next. So tendering procedure. So tendering procedure naman, this is the paraan ng pagpili. Okay, so according to our definition here, it presents a systematic approach for tendering and awarding of contracts for construction projects. So, when we have different contractors at hand na nagpre-present ng kanilang mga quotation, ng kanilang mga tender documents, hindi naman ang pwedeng mag ini mini mini mo lang tayo sa kanila. We have to be objective and systematic in uh, picking out uh, the best contractor and the best one suited for the project. No? It is intended to assist, tinutulungan niya employer or engineer, to receive sound competitive tenders in accordance with the tender documents so that they can be quickly and efficiently assessed. So, nagiging systematic and objective yung pagpili ng contractor sa pamamagitan ng pag-assess ng mga sinasubmit na tender documents. So, sa pagpili naman, is uh, sa pag-assess at pagpili ng mga tender documents, no, is may sinusunod tayong standard. No? At yun ay ang FIDIC. Ano naman ang FIDIC? So, FIDIC stands for Federation Internacional des Engineers or International Federation of Consulting Engineers. So, basically, ang FIDIC ay isang international standardized organization or international standard organization. So, at the international stage, they set the standard pagdating sa mga contracts and construction guidelines. Ganito, ganyan. No? Specifically for civil engineering projects and then electrical and mechanical works. No? So, the principal goal of FIDIC is to promote and execute the consulting engineering industry's strategic goals on behalf of its members and to publish information and resources of interest to its members. So, basically, si FIDIC is nagpapublish siya ng mga materials about guidelines sa contract documents, kaya nagkakaroon sila ng mga standardized contracts, and then yung mga guidelines pagdating sa mga civil engineering works, mechanical and electrical works. No? So, yun. Itong mga kontrata na to is nagsisilbing, nagsisilbing guidelines kasi itong mga to, lalong lalo na sa mga international construction projects na malalaki. Nagiging guidelines ito sa collaboration in between the different allied professionals kasi da, man, napakaraming allied professionals na nag-work dito dahil napakalaking projects na to at napakaraming elements na ang at risk. So para maging successful ang isang project, kailangan sumunod sila sa isang guidelines na standardized ni FIDIC. Okay? At itong FIDIC uh, mga procedures na in-standardize ni FIDIC din is in authorize din siya ng mga multilateral development banks. Bakit? Kasi nga, itong mga international construction projects na ito ay usually funded by 
pangungutang or nangungutang yung mga may-ari ng mga projects na ito sa mga multilateral development banks like World Development Banks para ma-fund itong construction na ito. At si Multilateral Development Bank, naniniguro lamang siya na magiging successful yung project para magkaroon ng return of investment yung nangutang at mabayaran niya yung utang niya. Okay? Kaya si Multilateral Development Banks ay inauthorize niya yung mga standardized contracts na pinuproduce ni FIDIC. Okay? Gets? Okay, next tayo. The FIDIC tendering procedure provides the opportunity and incentive to contractors to respond easily to invitations to tender. So si FIDIC tendering procedure daw ay nakakatulong at nagbibigay siya ng opportunity para sa mga contractors no? para makapag-respond sila ng madali sa mga invitations to tender dahil nalalaman kaagad nila kung qualified ba sila or if they are up to the job. Okay? So dahil yan sa isang feature ng FIDIC tendering procedure na pre-qualification which will be tackled later. So the next one is one of the benefits of FIDIC tendering procedure is kapag na-adapt mo siya is minimize niya yung tendering cost. Well, at that point, for international construction projects, there will be a cost always, no? Pagdating pa lang sa tendering, dahil napakalaking projects na itong mga to. And it will also ensure na lahat ng mga contractors na nag-submit na kanilang tender ay fair and equal ang opportunity na makukuha nila sa para ma-assess yung kanilang mga ibinigay na documents. At para malaman talaga kung sino yung best suited at maging fair yung laban. Okay, next. So in FIDIC or International Federation of Consulting Engineers, sabi nga kanina, nagpa-publish sila ng mga materials na nagsisilbing guidelines sa mga construction works. Specifically, Civil Engineering Construction Works. Ito nga, Red Book, pero naging magenta na siya. Kasi ito yung newer version, no? Ito yung newer version ng kanilang mga publications. And then the Yellow Book for Electrical and Mechanical Works. Yellow Book, pero dito, yan, iba rin title niya. But these are the same. These are just the newer versions. Conditions of contract for construction and conditions of contract for plan and design build. Even though these two books are highly specialized, no, they are very flexible, yung mga guidelines niya, and can be readily adapted to any acceptable contract form. So that's something na maganda talaga pagdating sa mga guidelines ni FEDIC. Okay? Next. Pre-qualification, ito na yung nabanggit ko kanina. So, I will just give you a glimpse of why pre-qualification, I think, no, is the best uh, best and most essential part of the FIDIC tendering procedure. Kasi, for three reasons, no. First, for me, is it saves time. Why does it save time? Kagaya na sinabi ko kanina, pre-qualification because FIDIC tendering procedure enables and gives opportunity to contractors to respond easily at nalalaman ka agad ng mga contractors if they are up to the job, if they are qualified. Because pre-qualification, nagsiset tayo ng standards kaagad sa invitation to tender para sa ating mga tenderers. At nalalaman ka nila if kaya ba nila talaga itong project na ito. And then next is na-establish yung competence ng mga companies. Dahil sa simula pa lang sa invitation to tender pa lang is nasasala na kaagad sila. Na-filter out na yung mga hindi capable at competent na companies para sa project na ito. And then lastly, for me, is na pre-preserve yung competitiveness pagdating sa tendering. Kasi importante ang competitiveness para ma-bring out yung best sa mga offers and sa mga strategic uh, offers ng mga tenderers. No? So si, mga, si contractor, hindi siya magpapakampante dahil alam niya na lahat ng competitors niya is pre-qualified and they are they possess the required competence and capability for the job. So, nagbibigay siya ngayon ng mga mga best offers at si employer at sa mga si engineer o mga may-ari ng project na yun is nalalaman talaga nila kung ano yung best uh, tender para dun sa project na yun at nakakapag-partner sila doon sa contractor na pinaka the best of the best talaga. Okay? So, someone will continue on in this topic, pre-qualification. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Adela Santiago from Group 4. Pre-qualification. It is an assessment made by the employer of the appropriate level of experience and capacity of firms 
expressing interest in undertaking a particular contract before inviting them to bid. Pre-qualification. It is a method of finding contractors who have indicated that they are qualified and interested in bidding on a project. Pre-qualification is not the same as tendering. It is not always utilized and is not always required. Most contracts are offered for tendering in the public domain and do not need pre-qualification. Pre-qualification is typically used on large, complicated projects that need specialized technical knowledge. Pre-qualification also allows for early contractor involvement or ECI, which is a cost-effective, more efficient, and less confrontational way of designing and planning infrastructure projects in which certified contractors may provide their skills prior to the commencement of a project. Requalification is a preliminary assessment of an applicant's ability to qualify for a loan. In the mortgage process, pre-qualification is used to provide lenders an indication of how much a person may borrow and what type of loan conditions she can qualify for. Advantage of pre-qualification By removing unqualified contractors from the outset, pre-qualification saves the project's owner's time and money. It compiles a short list of contractors who possess the necessary expertise to carry out the contract's conditions as well as the financial and technical resources to complete the task. Only contractors who have been pre-qualified are eligible to bid on the contract when pre-qualification is employed. FIDIC provides advice on appropriate pre-qualification forms. Purpose of pre-qualification In most nations, pre-qualification of bids is a standard procedure. This stage might alternatively be thought of as the start of the official procurement process to find a private investor or service provider. This stage begins with a request for interest expressions. The primary goal is to pre-qualify potential project bids. Pre-qualification is used to check the technical and management competence, as well as the financial soundness, of potential bidders. Bidder pre-qualification isn't meant to include any component of the project proposal or variables linked to the indicated contract. These factors are taken into account at the end of the procurement procedure. Pre-qualification example Katie hopes to buy a house. Before she can begin to shop for one, she needs to determine how much house she can afford to buy. She applies for a mortgage online. The lender requests basic information about her debts and income. A credit score is pulled. The lender then says Katie is pre-qualified for a loan of $250,000. She must then submit documentation and undergo a more rigorous approval process. A responsible bidder is a contractor qualified on the basis of First, is able to comply with the associated legal or regulatory requirements. Second, is able to deliver according to the contract schedule. Third, has a history of satisfactory performance. Fourth, has a good reputation regarding integrity. Fifth, has or can obtain necessary data, equipment, and facilities. And lastly, is otherwise eligible and qualified to receive award if its bid is chosen. Post-qualification Post-qualification is an assessment made by the employer after the evaluation of bids and immediately prior to award of contract to ensure that the lowest evaluated, responsive, eligible bidder is qualified to perform the contract in accordance with previously specified qualification requirements. Post-qualification, it is the process of determining if the bidder with the lowest calculated offer in the case of commodities and infrastructure projects 
or the highest rated bid, in the case of consulting services, has satisfied all the bidding documents, requirements, and conditions. If the lowest calculator, the highest rated bidder, achieves all the post-qualification requirements, his proposal will be classified as the lowest calculator responsive bid for goods and infrastructure and the highest rated responsive bid for consulting services. Only the bidder with the lowest calculated responsive bid or the highest rated responsive bid will be awarded the contract. Summary of Pre-Qualification and Post-Qualification Pre-Qualification merely requires contractors to fulfill a minimal level of qualification. While the post-qualification, if a contractor appears to be the lowest tender for a project, it will be required to provide documentation confirming its credentials because the primary goal of competitive bidding is to encourage open and free competition so that as many contractors as possible submit bid proposals and to ensure that the contracting agency awards the contract to the lowest, most responsible and competent bidder. Post-qualification of bidders appears to be advantageous. The most recent and pre present conditions might be considered in assessing qualification if the seeming low bidder is post-qualified. There are arguments in support of pre-qualification certificates. Breakdown of FIDIC Tendering Procedure Breakdown of FIDIC Tendering Procedures has six parts. First, Project Strategy. Second, pre-qualification of tenders. Third, obtaining tenders. Fourth, opening of tenders. Fifth, evaluation of tenders. And last, award of contract. Project strategy refers to the overall goals and direction of the project, especially as it relates to project execution. The term project is used to refer to all stages of a project, from the initial concept of building a physical asset through the final handover of the finished job to the employer. The project strategy lays out how the project will be implemented, assigns roles to each party involved, and when necessary, explains how the project will run. The project plan determines the contractual connections between the parties, as well as their individual rights, responsibilities, and risk to a considerable extent. Tendering is a means of ensuring that work is purchased at competitive terms throughout the implementation stage of a project. The selection of a strategy is a momentous decision with far-reaching implications. Once a strategy has been determined, it is critical that it be followed throughout the project execution. Failure to adhere to the approach may result in procurement errors, leading in claims, conflicts, and additional expenditures for all parties involved. As soon as the project plan has been chosen, the employer should develop procurement techniques and forms of tendering to be utilized in the project with the help of his engineer. The procurement method and forms of tendering are established by determining 1 the parts of the project for which tenders are to be sought. It is important that the scope of a particular contract is clearly defined and that interfaces with other parts of the project are accounted for. A contract may comprise design, delivery of plant and machinery, construction, a, or a combination of these. 2. The conditions of contract to be adapted. Only widely recognized standard conditions of contract which specifically cover the works and services to be rendered by the contractor should be used. 3. The award criteria. The award criteria should cover all elements on which the employer wishes the tenderers to compete. The factors other than price to be used in the award criteria 
should to the extent practicable be expressed in monetary terms. The award criteria may include cost, quality or performance, time, ingenuity, and environmental effects, and it may be necessary to apply weightings to each criterion through which a basis which will be used when evaluating the renders. 4. The Tendering Procedure This document contains what FIDIC regards as a fair and systematic approach for obtaining and evaluating tenders. The basic procedure described in this document can be used for tendering for all types of contracts in connection with international and, dos and domestic construction projects. 5. The criterion which shall be used to pre-qualify tenderers. In principle, pre-qualification should always be carried out to ensure that only those who are qualified to undertake the work invest resources in the preparation of a tender. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I am group for of tendering procedure engineering management by our leader of Prince Arbic Victoria. I am Arlene Kalugay, BSCA third year. From the lesson assigned, assigned for me is pre-qualification of tenderers. It's a means of identifying contractors who indicate that they are qualified and would be interested in tendering for a potential project. Pre-qualification is primarily applied for large complex projects that require specialized technical expertise like public agency to encourage studies of bidders pre-qualified prior to bidding and review bidder. Like in a pre-qualification questionnaire, six out of a series of questions for potential tenderers or suppliers to answer regarding their level of experience, technical abilities, and financial outstanding, it enables a buyer to shortlist appropriate to suppliers for the project who will then invite it to bid for the contract. In the, ex uh, in the experience of any part of tenderers, it are uh, suppliers and the receiver of the car of their company, and they have re uh, they have re uh, re invited they have received invited to bid the contract of the supplier if they have a common project if they have a stable if they have a they have a bird up of the building like the financial outstanding to any part of their employer. Another example of pre-qualification of tenderers. Example, many companies choose to bid for contracts that they are non-compliant with leading misses spin of resources and time. Therefore, pre-qualification questionnaire are resourceful help for the buyers to shortlist the supplier's tender invitation in terms of experience. And, and the loop does not require any public agency to adopt pre-qualification system. Instead of it authorizes every public agency that should choose, chooses to adopt pre-qualification system to specify certain requirements that must be met by its interested contractor as described. It's a uh, public contract code. Uh, it's a, st a standardized questionnaire and financial statement in hope for specified by the public entity like uh, a system of bidders of objective of criteria on the basis of completed and determination and determination of pre-qualification of projects of tenderers like examples of many companies choose to bid for contracts that they are non-compliant with leading with spin or resources and time. Therefore, pre-qualification questionnaires are a resourceful help for the buyers to shortlist the supplier standard invitation in terms of experience. In California, private works construction is failing and diminishing, while public works public projects construction is spending is slowing its still continues to fuel the construction industry. This is the result of commencement of projects that were pre-approved during better economic times. And the passage of $13.5 billion public education for facilities and research aim of modernization of school buildings 
where they are, have always been procurement related stages that allow public agencies to pre qualify bidders. In California, they have a public entities, they now have become more selective in determining who is qualified to bid on a public works projects. Are the articles of pre qualification have discussed of California stations generally mandate California and public works projects and competitively bid? Pre qualification of tenderers. Right stage one, CTC grading of general contractors output of 50 contractors, like the employer, uh, like, the, uh, like the employee of the contractors or 50 if, if they have a, a liberal, not for uh, for the general contractors as required for the engineers, for the engineers of the required for the uh, other terms of liberal. Right the stage two, QCP, pre qualification for general key projects output twenty five contractors. Stage three, car for design build pre qualification output twelve contractors. Like the interest interested of contractors like volume of previ previous public works, financial credential, technical evaluation, financial evaluation, design experience, design build experience. Care part experience, care and design build projects, experience of independent EA, and rank of the pre qualified design, design build contracts, contractors for the car part project for the required for any part of design. The delivery system is gaining ground in the private sector due to its proven, proven success. Public sector owners are still skeptical and hesitant to adopt it. Selecting the design builder can be complex process, particularly for public sector projects. The selection of private sector design build teams can be much less formal. This paper presents the result of a study of the application of the design build delivery method in the public sector using professional construction management services. The methodology implement, implementation of selecting contracting form for design build project is described in detail. The process includes pre-qualification, technical and financial evaluation, key issues in the terms of reference, pre-tender meeting, desi tender designs for supervision consultant, and critical contract clauses. The analysis resulted in the positive in indicators for the adoption, adoption of design design build and importance in public projects. Good day once again. I am Prince Arvikan Victorio. And in place of Melvin M. Segundo, who was not able to give us a piece of his report and was not able to discuss his part in this final report, uh, I will be explaining this uh, part of the report, okay? So obtaining tenders. So this is the process wherein you invite, no? Dito mo invite yung mga contractors na because you've already done the pre-qualification stage, no? After that, uh, there are already a number of what you call competitive and competent and capable contractors. So the first thing to do when you obtain tenders is to prepare the tender documents. When it comes to the submitted documents by those contractors, you prepare those for evaluation, okay? And then issue of tender documents. When uh, in issue na yung mga ano, tender documents, dun sa mga mag -e evaluate Ang gagaling yan dun sa mga sinasubmit na, di ba? Ganon. And then uh, the tenderer and the employer or engineer, no? Makikipag-usap yung mga yan. Kasi negotiation itong part ng obtaining ng tenders eh. Kasi kukuha ka nga talaga ng mga contractors na mag-execute ng plans and designs mo. So, once na-issue na yung mga tender documents, yung mga quotations ng mga contractors, and then other such documents, no? The tender will now visit the site. Magka-site visit si tenderer. Titignan niya yung site, kung ano yung mga, ano niya, ano yung mga issues, possible issues there. And then, magkakaroon ng mga questions ngayon si tenderer. Kagaya ng sinabi ko nga kanina, uh, not all things in the plans can be executed, no? Because there will be always a compromise pagdating sa mga ganyan. 
and dito yun mag arise kapag nakita na ni contractor kung ano yung kung saan yung site mismo. And then yan, addenda to tender documents. From the word itself, addenda or addendum, dito na yung magkakaroon ng changes. Diyan na yung mga compromises na sinasabi ko. Okay? And then next is the submission and receipt of tenders. Yan. Ito na yung final. Kumbaga, itong part na to, itong obtaining tenders, no? So part na ito is naghahanap pa lang tayo, no? Nandiyan pa lang yung part din na pre-qualification actually to correct what I've said earlier. Itong part na to is when you obtain tenders, you prepare the documents, the tender documents, and then you issue them. And then before to before they finalize, no, the, the contractors, before they finalize the tender documents, eh, they need to visit the site and then ask some questions to the employer or engineer or to the consulting engineers. And then there will be changes. Hence, the addendum or the addenda. No? And then lastly, the submission and receipt of tenders. Now, this is very important in uh, the construction industry, the receipt. No? Lagi ka dapat meron kang receiving copy. Because kapag nagkasisihan na hindi binigay yung ganito ganyan, meron kang maipapakita na nireceive mo yung ganito. Or kapag nagbigay ka, ikaw yung contractor and binigay mo dun sa consulting engineers yung tender documents mo at sinabi nilang hindi nila na-receive, meron kang maipapakita na permado na receive, receiving copy. Okay? So, yan. Next tayo. And then next is the opening of tenders. So, opening of tenders. Ito na yun. After the tender documents have been uh, finalized, uh, this is where you open the tender, which means all the contractors, no? Uh, all the contractors will now submit their finalized tender documents for evaluation para malaman na kung sino sa kanila yung pipiliin ng consulting engineers para ipatayo yung mga plans and designs nila. So, I'm so sorry if uh, what I know about this part of the uh, report is very little. However, I hope that was helpful. So, thank you. Today, I am John Nimble Piaquino, a third-year student at Colegio de Dagupan, and I was assigned to discuss about the evaluation of tenders and the awarding of contract. So, the evaluation of tenders is the stage in the procurement process during which a contracting authority identifies which one of the tenders meeting the set requirements is the best one and the basis of the pre-announced award criteria. So either the lowest priced or the most economically advantageous tender will win the business. The process of evaluating tender begins with the submission of the contractor's response to the invitation to tender. So the selection criteria that tenders will be evaluated on may include first the technical merit of the proposal. So during the evaluation process, it will check whether the requirements meet the desired quality attributes like adequacy, completeness, and consistency. Second, the capability of the business to fulfill, fulfill the requirement including technical and management competence, financial viability, and relevant experience. Third, relevant skills, experience, and availability of key personnel. So availability of key personnel, also called key employees which directly, significantly, and positively contribute to the company's value. If these personnel are not available, then it could affect the business ability to perform effectively. Fourth is the quality assurance requirement. And fifth is the risk and constraints associated with the offer. So risk or event that may or may not happen resulting in unwanted consequences or losses and constraint or the real-world limit of the possibilities of the project. These two are checked during the evaluation process. Review of tenders. Tender review meetings form a significant part of a contractor's tendering process. So these are the instances in a tender process when the members of a bid team come together to coordinate their tender preparation activities, develop their tender strategy, and quality check the output to date of a tender process. Deviation in tendering. The existing procurement regulations allow organs of state to dispense with the prescribed process of tendering in certain instances. However, every single incident of deviation is subject to reporting and accountability. 
which means that it has to be approved by the relevant financial treasury authorities of that organ of state, looking to award contracts under this practice. Each respective form of deviation requires its own set of regulations, which must be complied with by both the organ of the state and the supplier, in order to ensure that the process can be measured under the fair, equitable, transparent elements of the Constitution and that the organ of state has received fair value for the goods and services offered by the supplier. Adjudication of tenders. So adjudication is the process of convert, converting the contractor's estimate into a tender bid. So adjudication is a management activity which, particularly in a competitive tendering situation, usually involves the exercise of subtle and subjective commercial judgment in arriving at the bid figure. Issue of letter of acceptance. So this letter is issued by the company giving intimation to the bidder that his tender has been accepted in accordance with the provisions contained in that letter. So, it is issued and signed by the employer and usually one to two pages long. So, it can contain annex memoranda comprising agreements between the parties. Awarding of contract. Contract awarding is the method used during a procurement in order to evaluate the proposals or the tender offers taking part and award the relevant contract. Usually at this stage, the eligibility of the proposals have been concluded. Performance security. A performance security is a guarantee that the winning bidder will faithfully perform its obligations under the contract prepared in accordance with the bidding documents. So finally, we've come to an end, and in behalf of the other reporters, and me, Prince Arvika Victorio, and the other reporters, which are Adrian A. Santiago, Arlene Kalugay, and Jen Lemuel Aquino, we would like to extend our thanks to everyone who listened up to this part. I hope you learned so many things about tendering procedure. And uh, padayon, engineers.